And let's start this video out with a look at some goats being transferred here by pickup truck. Just another day here in Saudi Arabia. And then we look over at the sun coming up. This was very early in the morning. I was heading out to work and the sun was just coming up over the horizon. Very beautiful. All right. So welcome back. And we are going to talk today about something that is called CRC and what that is and you are going to be going through it if you get yourself a position uh, working overseas. Uh, basically CRC is going to be what's called the CONUS Replacement Center. What this means, I'll take you through it step by step and uh, the idea is going to be, I know that you may have heard a lot about CRC and uh, you may have heard some rumors about it. I'm going to be giving you exactly what's going to happen, exactly what takes place, and you won't be uh, confused about it anymore. So I hope you get a lot out of this video, and I'll see you in just a few seconds. After years of military contracting overseas, and I'm getting ready to retire, I thought I would pass on the information that I learned over years of working abroad to inspire others to reach out check out the world see the jobs that are overseas and learn something about yourself all right so hello from saudi and i would like to take a moment to talk to you about what's called crc and what that means for you when you take a position working overseas uh, especially in the middle east first of all let's talk about contracting in general when you get a job overseas contracting, uh, you will, if it's going to be someplace like Japan or someplace like Germany or uh, one of the uh, Eastern European nations, uh, many of which are opening up to a lot of great jobs, uh, there will be certain requirements that you'll have to go through to take that job. However, a lot of those positions are pretty straightforward as jobs. And you don't necessarily have to go through any specialized contractor training to go there. You will probably have to do certain certificates online and certain educational trainings to go there. But the Middle East is different. When you go work in the Middle East, you're going to have to go through what's called CRC. And so this is if you're taking a job working in Afghanistan, uh, if you're working in Kuwait, if you're working in Qatar. Uh, Possibly if you are going to be rotating through those countries from other ones. So if you're working in the UAE or if you're working in uh, Bahrain, but you have to supplement those other locations, then you'll have to go through this training as well. They, they do have situations where you are sort of a backfill person. Someone goes on vacation, you fly in and replace them for a few months, and then you come back out, uh, in which case you will have to go through CRC. The steps are going to look like this when you submit your resume to a company and they uh, go through the online and through the telephone interview process with you they are going to have you begin what's called onboarding onboarding is going to consist of a variety of documents that you're going to have to send okay to that company identifications and certifications then they're going to ask you to do a bunch of certifications online this is training like uh, cybersecurity training, things along those lines online. Things that are like annuals that you have to do. Also, the company may have you take some courses uh, such as how to fill out their timesheet, things like that. After that's all submitted, you're going to start focusing on going to CRC. And this is at Fort Bliss, Texas, in the uh, southern part of Texas. All right, very hot area kind of desolate but you know you're there for a couple of weeks and then you're moving along and the base is actually quite nice uh, the base had a nice steakhouse on it uh, there were a couple other places that you could go to eat and it was nice I enjoyed Fort Bliss when you have all your paperwork gathered you're gonna go to CRC there's a few things that you can expect when you show up you're going to have your bags and everything to go into your uh, country that you'll be heading to. All right. So I've done some videos on what to bring and what not to bring. 
I refer to you on those so you know what to bring to CRC because you're going to be going right through. All right. When you get there, you're going to meet up with a liaison from your company. That liaison will do a couple of things. One, make sure that you have all the stuff you're supposed to have to go in country. Two, they're going to make sure you have the paperwork required all in order. Three, they're probably going to send you over to get the second of a few shots. Uh, I said in an earlier video uh, about immunizations that you'll have to get two part shots for some of your immunizations. They will take you and get you that second part shot so that you have those complete. And they will just basically make sure that you got everything online to get ready for the next week and a half, two weeks that you're going to go through. While you are uh, with them, ask any questions that you have because generally that liaison has worked in country and one of the Middle Eastern countries and now they're back working in the Fort Bliss area doing this job, this sort of liaison. So you can ask them a lot of questions and you can get answers. Okay. After you go through this process with your company liaison, who will probably pick you up at the airport, take you to Fort Bliss, everything, all right, drop you off. You're going to check into a room. You're going to be given a bed and a locker. You want to make sure that you bring two paddle locks at least. Make sure it's got the same key. I like to have a little uh, military style chain around my neck that holds the key. Uh, and all the, the paddle locks should just work with the one key. If you want to bring three paddle locks, bring three. But uh, make sure you have that so that you can lock. And that's just part of traveling. It's part of responsibly traveling is to make sure you got a paddle lock. And I say definitely bring at least two. You lock up your stuff. You're going to be going downstairs from where you're sleeping, and there'll be a board with all the information that you're looking for, including answers to your questions for getting checked in, as well as your schedule for the next day. So check what your schedule is for the next day. All right. One of the things that you will do after you're issued a bed and a locker and you have your stuff locked up is you're going to go down and check out some sheets and pillows. Go back up, make your bed. You'll then be directed to where to go uh, for meals. However, I will tell you that the way the Fort Bliss is set up, where you are doing CRC and where you go eat, there are a little ways away from each other so you need to make time to go walk there to eat so that you get there on time to eat but the dining facility on base was great um, for myself because I was kind of thinking about what I needed to get done and everything in the week was coming up uh, that week week and a half is coming up of training I really wasn't that hungry uh, so for me I had some protein bars and I picked up some sugar-free energy drinks at a small uh, cantina that they have that's right there next to where you do CRC. It has protein bars, it has snacks, but I just get some sugar-free drinks and stuff. And then that's the way I started my day. I ate a protein bar and a sugar-free energy drink and I was ready to go for that day. I didn't worry about going off to eat at the DFAC. Uh, just staying focused on what I needed to do. So you'll get your bed made up and everything, and you'll have on that board what you're going to do the next day. You get up the next day, and you'll either be bussed somewhere, or it may be somewhere that's close to you that you'll be where you'll be going. These are the things that you can expect in that first week. You'll be given a list of online courses that you need to complete. There is a library available with computers for you and it's generally open 24 7 with a printer so you can print out your certificates as you're doing them you will also have uh, Wi-Fi available at certain locations so that you can do some of your courses online some of your courses you can do online some you need to do in the library because you're going to get issued a CAC card this contractor card is going to be used to log in to some of these websites now, by the time you get to CRC, you will probably have that CAC card already worked out through your company, but maybe not. If not, you'll get it worked out there. <clears throat> the, 
the list of online certifications that you have to take will be long. Survival courses, escape and evasion courses, the dangers of the country you're going into, like uh, issues of you know, threats, the threats that are in that country, depending on which country it is, the history of that country, all right? Uh, a little bit about the people, customs, cultures, you can expect that. And you'll also have uh, information about just the military in general, like how to work in and amongst the military. This is for people that maybe are not military background. All of that. There's a lot. You'll have a stack of certifications when you get done. Between what you took at home and between what you need to do when you go to CRC, you'll have a stack like this of certifications that you'll complete. Uh, you'll be doing them until late in the evening. And uh, some of the courses that you take have a quiz at the end. Some do not. Some you just have to watch and then you're done. You get a certificate. At the end of that phase of CRC, when you have all your certifications together, done, they will go through with a checklist and make sure that you have it. It's very similar to like being in the military in a way. You get lined up with your folder and all your certificates and you just start laying them out. They tell you what order they want them in and you set them in that order and then they go through like this. Bam, bam, bam. Do you have everything? If you do, they're checking it off, and they're like, okay, you're ready to move on to the next phase after you get all these certificates done. Uh, the next phase is going to be a uh, medical examination. The medical examination, now these may be different, put in different places as necessary. Uh, you may have the medical examination at the end of CRC, all right? Just these are the phases that you'll go through. The medical examination is like the physical you went through to get in. All right, and I did a separate video on that, the physical to get in. So you know everything you're going to go through. You're going to go through a heart monitor machine, hearing, eyes. You're going to go through range of motion. They're going to do blood pressure. They're going to do a variety of tests. Psychological evaluations will be done. <clears throat> uh, one recommendation that I'll give you on this, the day that you go in for this physical, it's an all-day evolution. You'll be there all day until the evening, going from one office to another, just like the military, getting all these physicals checked, even though you did it back home. You're going to do it all again. That day, do not drink your energy drink because it'll send your blood pressure through the roof. So do not drink your energy drink that morning. Just go, okay? Just drink water and go to your physical. And you'll go through all the steps and be done. After you finish that day, whether depending upon where it's in your CRC training, because there'll be there might be other groups going through CRC as well. So when it's your time to do that phase, you get a document. It's a yellow document, and that basically means that you pass the physical training portion, the physical examination portion, which is in depth. And they call that the golden ticket. That's what it's called. You've got that paper, you're golden, all right? You got all your certs done. You, uh, you got your golden ticket. The rest of CRC, just have fun, basically. Just have fun. The two things that you can expect next is you're going to go through a basic firearms course so that you know how to pick up a firearm, make sure it's loaded, aim it at something, and fire and hit it. That's it. That's how basic it is. All right? It's designed for people maybe that never picked up a firearm in their life. All right? Um, it's a machine that does not actually fire rounds, but it is very realistic. It is a laser uh, machine, basically, and it's outstanding. It's a great training device. You'll be stepped back. You'll go through all the training. They'll put you through all the step-by-step -step training, how to manipulate uh, the AR-15, everything. Um, and then you will go up to the AR-15. It, it, it won't be loaded. You have to load it. You have to arm it. You have to aim it. You have to fire a certain number of shots and hit a certain number of shots to pass. All right. And they're going to take you through all of this. Eventually, what they do, this is what they did for us, okay? They said, who thinks you can pass it right now? 
So all the former military guys like, we'll do it right now. So they just took you through and you're done. You're out for that. You're finished. Then they could focus on the people that honestly were like, I don't know for sure if I can do this. They put them through more training. And that way, by the end of the day, everyone's passed and everyone's through. Okay. Then the next day, you're going to go through Humvee rollover training. This portion of the training is to basically, if you are in a situation where you're in a Humvee or any large vehicle, and that vehicle goes into a situation where it either hits something or an IED goes off and it flips you over, you know how to call out certain things to your team so that they know you're still alive and that this is happening and that you're aware this is happening, how to brace yourself, and then how to extract from that vehicle in different ways. Does it end up upside down? Does it end up on its side? Whatever the case might be. How to extract from the vehicle in an orderly, organized fashion so you get out. All right. Uh, that portion of the training, uh, it's interesting that a lot of people are very nervous about it. They're very nervous about that portion of the training. Uh, for me, uh, I thought it was just outstanding. It was, it was, it was fun. It was interesting. And, uh, you know, I, I worked as a diver in the Navy, so we did uh, what's called dipsy dunkers, where it was like simulated helicopters that were going in the water and then turn upside down. And they had to extract underwater out. That was part of helicopter training that the Navy had to go through, Air Force, whoever's going to be as part of a helicopter air crew. We call those dipsy dunkers. And a lot of divers, you know, we work those type of situations as part of your diving career. Uh, and... So I thought it was very interesting. I, I really enjoyed that portion of training. After you finish up that uh, rollover training, you've now pretty much gone through all the stages of CRC. Now, if there is a flight ready for you, maybe one or two days away, you actually have a little bit of time to yourself. Don't leave base. Stay on base and just enjoy the base facilities so that you're ready to get on a bus and you're ready to go and get on your plane because it's a it's a contracted plane to take everybody to your destination and your destination is going to be uh, Kuwait and that's where you enter that area of the world the Middle East okay that's the gateway that you take is through Kuwait and then you go off to your respected uh, um, countries and duty stations and we'll be discussing that in another uh, video. But, yeah, just enjoy yourself on base. Don't leave base. And just be ready to go. If you have any dirty clothes that you made while you were there, because you were there for maybe two weeks, um, maybe even one week, all right? If you have dirty clothes, as laundry facilities, get it done. It's up to you. It, everything is there. It's a regular military base, so you have a, a place to grab snacks, you have a DFAC, you have restaurants to eat at. Uh, another tip, if you're heading to the Middle East, you're not going to have any alcohol. I'm not telling you, but you might want to go to that steakhouse and have that last couple whiskeys. Because you're not going to have any for six months until your first vacation, all right? so. But I'm not telling you to do that. All right. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope this is the real deal of what you're going to go through at CRC, what it's all about, what the stages are. Uh, so you're not getting any hearsay or any, you know, random talk on the Internet. That's exactly what you're going to do. All right. I think you'll enjoy it. and I think you'll do fine. Uh, if you have any comments on this, uh, please put it down in the comment section. If you want anything you want me to specifically talk about, let me know. Other than that, um, I hope you have a great day. And uh, I hope this has been helpful for you. And we will talk again. Have yourself a great evening.